Hi friends, I'm Dishma and you're watching my channel G Tutorial. Today's class is on microprocessor for CBT2 of RRB J exam. We are asked to study about the 8085 microprocessor in the syllabus of RRB JE. So in this class we will be dealing with the basis of microprocessor and the evolution of microprocessor and then we will go to the architecture of 8085. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel for getting more RRBJ related videos. Now let us get to our class. First let us see what is meant by a microprocessor. It's a device, it's a program control device which fetches, decodes and executes some instructions. It is mainly used as CPU in computers. It is used as central processing unit of computers. The basic units of a microprocessor are ALU, an array of registers and a control unit. The abbreviation for ALU is arithmetic and logic unit. The microprocessor is identified with the size of data the ALU of the processor can work with. If ALU is able to process only 8-bit data then it is called 8-bit processor. 8085 is such a processor. It is having an 8-bit ALU. So 8085 is called 8-bit processor. But 8086 is able to process 16 bits. Its ALU is able to perform operations on 16 bit data. So 8086 is a 16 bit processor. And we are asked to study only about 8085 for the, uh, in the syllabus of RRPJ. So we will be dealing only with 8085. Now let us see about the evolution of microprocessors. The first microprocessor was released by Intel Corporation in 1971. It was Intel 4004. It was a 4 bit microprocessor and it used PMOS technology. The instruction size set has a size of 45 instructions. Now let us see about the first generation microprocessor. First generation microprocessors mainly used PMOS technology, which provided low cost, slow speed, and low output current. But the disadvantage was it was not talk compatible with TTL, transistor transistor logic levels. We will see about this in digital circuits. Uh, then uh, the it, it also required additional support ICs for uh, becoming a complete system. And another disadvantage was it, it had only 16 pins. Some of the uh, first generation microprocessors are Intel 4004. Then Intel 4040, Fairchild PPS25, Rockwell PPP4, then National IMP4, etc. were the 4-bit processors of first generation. And Intel 8008, National IMP8, Rockwell PPP8, AMI7200 were the 8-bit processors of the first, first generation. And National Pay16 was a 16-bit processor belonging to first generation. Uh, the main applications of first generation microprocessors were calculators, gaming machines, home appliances and accounting system. Now let us see about the second generation microprocessors. Now let us see about the second generation processors. It was first uh, released in 1973. It used NMOS technology which provided faster speed than PMOS technology. Uh, the processors were DTL compatible. It had 40 pins and ability to address large memory space, ability to address more input output ports, more powerful in, in, uh, instruction set, better interrupt handling capabilities. These are the features of the second generation processors. Some of the second generation processors are Intel 8080, Intel 8085, Fairchild F8, Motorola M6800. Uh, Motorola M6809, Intercell 6100, Toshiba TLCS12. These two are 12-bit processors. Those I have mentioned before were 8-bit and general instru instrument CP1600 uh, and data gen general mu M601 were 16-bit processors. Uh, the applications of second generation processors involved complex industrial controllers, communication preprocessors, instrumentation, military applications and data acquisition system. Now let us see about the third generation systems. The 
third generation processors were released after 1978. Um, most of the processors of third generation are 16-bit processors and they use HMOS technology, high density MOS technology. Uh, some of the uh, third generation processors are Intel 8086, 8088, 80186, Intel 80286, Motorola 68000, Motorola 68010, Texas Instruments TMS 99000. And uh, some of the features provided by third generation processors are it provided 40 or 48 or 64 pin ICs. Uh, high speed and very strong processing capability, easier to program. Size of the internal registers are 8, 16 or 32 bits. Flexible input output addressing, segmented addressing and virtual memory features and most powerful inbred handling capability. These are the features provided by the third generation microprocessors. And they were mainly used for advanced communication, sophisticated real-time control, and business and data processing applications. Now let us see about the fourth generation processors. The fourth generation microprocessors were introduced in 1980 and they were 13-bit processors. Uh, they used HCMOS technology, that is they are the low power version of HMOS technology. Some of the uh, fourth generation microprocessors are Intel 80386, Intel 80486, Motorola M68020, Motorola M68030, Motorola MC88100. And the features of the fourth generation microprocessor are they provided a physical memory space of 16 MB and virtual memory space of 1 terabyte. Floating point hardware was incorporated in fourth generation microprocessors. And they supported increased number of addressing modes. The applications of 4th generation microprocessors are office information equipment and multi-user multifunctional environment. Now let us see about the architecture of a microprocessor. We have now seen the 4 generations of microprocessors and now let us see about the architecture of a microprocessor. This is the block diagram of the basic components of a microprocessor. Uh, a microprocessor mainly consists of arithmetic and logic unit, register array or internal memory, flag register, instruction and decoding unit, program counter or instruction pointer and timing and control unit. Arithmetic or logic unit is the, is the uh, functional unit of a microprocessor. It performs all the arithmetic and logic operations. And the result of this AIU uh, sets the flags of, the, uh, sets the bits of this flag register. This flag register contains several bits which are known as status flags. Suppose uh, the result of the ALU is negative value. Then it will set the sign flag. One of the bit of this flag register is sign bit. It sets the sign bit to 1. If the result is negative, the sign bit is set as 1 and if the result is positive, the sign bit is set as 0. This is what is meant by flag register. The, uh, the status of the output of ALU is uh, fed in the flag register. Next is uh, there is a register array of internal memory. It is internal to this microprocessor and it stores uh, the input data to ALU and also the output data from ALU and also uh, any other binary information is stored in this register array. It is internal so it is known as internal memory. Then hmm, uh, there are a, a lot of instructions which are written by the manufacturer and when we have to uh, make a microprocessor do to do some peculiar work, we have to write a program using these instruction sets provided by the uh, manufacturer. We are using the instructions from this instruction set provided by the manufacturer. And this program is written in some external memory. Program counter uh, always uh, provides the address of the instruction that is to be executed at a particular time. And this 
peculiar address is address of the that instruction code present in that external memory. So the program counter or instruction pointer uh, sends that address through the address bus to that external memory. And the instruction from that external memory is sent through this data bus. As well as uh, the instructions along with the data that has to be processed is sent through the data bus. And the instruction is decoded by this instruction and decoding unit. And the data is stored in the register array. The decoded instruction is sent to timing and control unit. Which generates uh, signals and provide to ALU for operation. It's, uh, uh, and the output of the ALU uh, sets the flag register bits and as well as the output of the data is stored in the register array etc. Again uh, for the next instruction program counter points to that instructions and uh, the uh, address bus carries the address of that to the external memory and the operation is repeated again and again. I will repeat uh, the basic components or basic working of a microprocessor once again. You can note down the basic components of uh, a microprocessor are arithmetic and logic unit, flag register, timing and control unit, register array or internal memory, instruction and decoding unit, program counter or instruction pointer. Manufacturer provides us a set of instructions which is known as instruction set. Using that instruction set, we are writing program for doing any particular operation. And at each time, the micro the program counter points to a particular address. And this address contains the uh, operation that has to be performed. And through the address bus, this address is sent to the external memory where the program is written. And that particular address uh, where the program counter points... Uh, there will be an instruction in that address and that instruction is uh, sent along with the data that has to be processed through that instruction through the data bus and the, uh, the instruction is decoded by the uh, instruction and decoding unit and the data is stored in the inner memory or register array. This instruction and decoding unit taking that instruction decode decoded instruction is fed to the timing and control unit it is a timing and control unit which generates the control signals and which asks the alu to perform a particular operation and the output of alu is uh, sets a flag register and the output of the alu is stored in a register array etc everything is controlled by the timing and control unit now let us see some of the important terms that we are using in uh, a microprocessor in terms uh, that we may use while studying about the architecture of microprocessor uh, or while doing programs etc. Now we can see that. First term is bus. Bus as I said is a group of conducting lines which mainly carries data, address and control signals. Data bus is a group of conducting lines which carries data that is used by uh, ALU for performing operations. Next is address bus. Address bus is a group of conducting lines that carries address. Address of the instructions that is to be executed. Next is control bus. These are group of conducting lines which carries control signals. So I think you are clear with the term bus. Next is clock. Clock is a square wave which is used to synchronize various devices in microprocessor and in the system. These are square waves. Clocks are square waves. This is a square wave and it is used to synchronize the various devices in a microprocessor. The devices in a microprocessor may be positive edge triggered, negative edge triggered or level triggered. Positive edge means it is the uh, raising edge of a clock or clock signal. This is the negative edge. This is the level edge. So the uh, devices may be positive edge triggered, negative edge triggered or level edge triggered. We will see about it later. Uh, just you understand this concept. Uh, every microprocessor requires a clock for its operation. The time taken to execute an instruction are measured in terms of the time period of this clock. To, to uh, execute any instruction, 
the time taken for executing that instruction is the, is measured in terms of this uh, the time period of this clock okay next next topic next is multiplexing multiplexing is transferring different informations at different well defined times through the same lines that is we are using the same bus for tra for carrying same bus or conducting lines for carrying different day, different uh, signals and different types. Uh, for example, uh, in 8085 microprocessor, the lower 8 address lines are multiplexed with data lines. That is, they are used for carrying both address and data. Uh, and uh, when the bus is multiplexed, this bus is called multiplexed bus. These are mainly done because uh, of the limitations of the pins. When pins are limited, microprocessor use this multiplexing technique. Most microprocessor cannot provide simultaneous similar li lines. That is, they are not able to provide uh, separate lines for data or address. So, they are using the uh, concept of multiplexing. And in order to demultiplex, the processor provide a signal AAD, address latch enable signal. When the address latch, when AAD is high, it provide, uh, it decodes the address and when AAD is low, it decodes uh, the data. We will see about it later in detail. This is uh, what is the prerequisite for studying the Intel 8085 microprocessor. Now, uh, we have studied about uh, the uh, basics of microprocessor, its basic architecture or components used in a microprocessor and also the evolution of microprocessor. In the next class we will be studying about a Intel 8085 which is a second generation microprocessor. If you are having any doubts, please comment below. Thank you.